All right, I'm going to do a project that uh, probably doesn't, doesn't need to be done, but I've always wanted to make one, so I'm going to make one. <laughs> uh, this is just a project that's been on the back of my mind for a very, very long time. Everybody on their dog has built one of these things, and they all have uh, different things, and they've made them microprocessor-based, they've made them uh, real simple, they made them complex, they made all kinds of different ones of them. And that is a curve tracer, a transistor curve tracer, right? So there's like the Tektronix 575. I used to own one of those. I sold it right away because um, I traded it for some stuff. Um, but um, I wanted to build my own. And so I looked at a bunch of cheapy ones. First of all, I looked to see if I could just buy one. And I didn't see anything I really liked. And, uh, and looked at some cheapy ones. They were too cheap. And then uh, I saw some ideas online. And, and I thought they were you know, they weren't quite right for me. Um, and then I found this thing, which is really cool. It's a, a plug-in for a, a 7 Series, uh, 700 Series, 7000 Series uh, Tektronics mainframe scope. It's a 7CT1N. It's a curve tracer plug-in for, uh, for the scope. It's really, it's really clever. Um, and so it has, uh, you know, collector steps. Uh, you know, it's a real curve tracer, and it goes in your, uh, in your oscilloscope. So real nice manual. And, uh, you know, it tells you, kind of tells you the theory, uh, which is nice. Um, you know, in order to do uh, a picture like this, you need to be able to monitor the current. And so this is a, a loop here. So they're monitoring, monitoring the voltage across the resistor. So they're, me they're measuring current in this direction. And then you need to know the voltage. So they're doing that here. They're looking at the voltage across the, uh, across the part, which is in this dimension. So that's all you need to do. You need to measure that, measure that. And then you need to have some voltage going in the top. And then you need to do a, uh, some type of step generator for the bias, biasing and stuff, right? And then you can do all kinds of curves. You can do uh, transistors and FETs and all kinds of things. So I think this would be really fun. This is the specification for it. Uh, and this is how this one works. Um, let's see, let's zoom in a little bit. So there's a horizontal measurement and a vertical measurement. And then uh, there's a power supply for the current. Uh, and you know your part under test is in here and then there's a staircase generator for the base current so anyway so that's the basic thing um yeah so let me let me show you the schematic which is going to be kind of big and complicated but uh this schematic has been great i really really like it uh there's a, a section here for stair step generator uh, there's a, a triangle wave generator over here uh, there's some nice discrete amplifiers that are high voltage, right? Op amps only get you to plus or minus 15 volts, and these are operating to plus or minus 50 volts. Um, and then you might want to even go higher in voltage than that, so there's a step-up transformer, a custom-made step-up transformer that they had. And uh, so, yeah, it's pretty cool. And then there's, uh, the, like I said, the measurement section. So there's some op amps that measure the current and measure the voltage and stuff. So this is what I want to build. And I want to make it a little bit simpler than this. Uh, this is too complicated, and it doesn't need to be this complicated now that we have lots of op amps available to us and stuff. But I think I can build something very, very close to this. I found another schematic online uh, for more, a more simplistic one. And uh, this one, I hope you, can, uh, hope you can see this one. Uh, so this one, you know, you plug it into the wall and it's got this big transformer in it. So this one generates plus or minus 12 volts for your op amps and stuff. And this one generates uh, uh, another signal, but this one is used for timing. So they're, they're doing zero crossing detection for the, for the AC and they're, they're using that as a clock generator. And they have a three-bit counter, so they can generate eight different steps, or zero plus seven different steps of uh, sawtooth or uh, a stair step, uh, and that turn gets turned into a current. After it gets through through this series of resistors, you get to choose choose which current to use. And then the uh, collector uh, voltage sweep is done with another part of the transformer. So this is going to sweep up and down in, in, in voltage. And there's a whole bunch of taps here. Uh, 10 volt tap, 20, uh, 60, 80, uh, up to 100. So every, 
every 10 volts is a tap on this transformer. So, so I'm not going to be able to find a transformer like this, but I think I can use the idea of this one, which is a little more simplistic. So, uh, uh, like here are the waveforms you expect. Uh, you know, there's, there's this counting waveform here where you're counting, um, you know, uh, 0, 1, and 2 bit for the for the, the digital counter. Here's the here's the stair steps and there's an there's an inverter here. There's an op amp that you can invert so you can ramp the step up for NPNs or ramp the step down for PNPs. And then um, the the ramp for the um, collector current is done with the uh, rectifier over here and you get positive going peaks for NPNs and negative going peaks for PNP. So a lot of good ideas here. So I'm going to take the best of these two schematics and see if I can't do my own and uh, have fun doing it. Okay. So let me show you, uh, let me show you my design. Uh, <coughs> sorry, uh, my initial design. And I'll show you a very, very crude prototype and I will see if we're on the right track. All right, so this is the idea. I have a, uh, a triangle wave being generated somewhere, and I'm going to put that into a transformer. So uh, this transformer is 110 volts in, 9 volts out. It's center tap, so you can have uh, 9 volts here or 18 volts across here, 9 volts center tapped. Um, and the transformer is made so you can wire it for 110 or 220. So I have all of these choices. So on the input, uh, I can elect to hook it up on uh, on these two terminals, all right, and then I'll have the lowest voltage on this side, or I can hook it up between these two, and I'll have double the voltage over on this side, right? So it's my choice. I can either do this and get certain voltage over here, or do this and get certain voltage over here. Now on the output, I have kind of the same choices. Um, I'm going to bridge rectify it, so I can either hook it up to one of these, and get, uh, you know, if I'm putting in nine volts, I'll get 110 out here. I can put 110 across here, or I could put them in series and I can get 220 out over on this side. So I have a lot of flexibility on how I can wire this thing. So you can make a bunch of switches here on different ranges, right? Maybe a 50 volt range, 100 volt range, 200 volt range, something like that, all right? So currently I'm uh, hooking on the outsides here and I'm hooking on uh, one of the 110. So this is how I have it configured configured right now. All right, so we're going to bridge rectify this and we're going to get a, uh, a voltage over here that's rectified. And if I put my scope probe here and I measure here, uh, what I'm going to see is if this is a ground reference, I'm going to see uh, positive positive peaks. And if I do it the opposite way, if I put my scope probe here and I measure here, I'm going to see negative going peaks, right? So that will be important of whether we want to measure NPN transistors or PNP transistors. Later on, we'll see how that works. But right now, I have it so that it's generating these positive peaks. There's no negative going voltages. It's all positive going voltages, okay? This 10K resistor here is just in case it ever goes open circuit. There's some type of load on the output so it doesn't go crazy. So that's just a fun thing there. And there's a 1K resistor here. That's also a fun thing. That's current limited. So if I accidentally short out my device under test, it's not going to blow up the transformer. There'll be a, a current limiting uh, resistor here. So 1K resistor. All right. Now, how do I measure the current uh, into the resistor? I can measure the voltage across across the uh, did I say resistor, the diode, the diode under test. I can measure the voltage across the diode by just putting a, a, a oscilloscope on this lead and on this lead. All right. If I wanted to measure the current, I would have to go break into here somehow. But the current actually comes here. It flows through the transformer. It comes here. And then this is where it gets ground referenced. So actually, the current is flowing, is flowing through this resistor. So if I measure uh, here, I'll measure the voltage through that resistor, and that will tell me the current. And if I measure here, then that will tell me the voltage. Right? So. Uh, since we're measuring current, we want to do this in the vertical dimension, and then this one is the horizontal dimension, right? So the horizontal scope uh, sweep and the, and the vertical scope sweep, okay? So, um, all right, so that's, uh, that's what we're going to hook up. I've already built this thing. I'll show it to you. 
Um, like I said, I'm repurposing a uh, repurposing a transformer uh, that normally operates in that direction. I'm going to operate in that direction. And then this is all pretty standard stuff here. And uh, uh, the only thing after we build something like this will be uh, instead of having a uh, a diode that we want to test, we will we'll be wanting to test a uh, a transistor. Let's say we're going to test an NPN transistor. All right, we're going to have to do something with the base, right? So. If we inject, let's say, one microamp into the base, then we can measure it and see what happens. If we got two microamps, three, 10 microamps, 100 microamps, you know, one milliamp, you can have a family of curves, and that's that curve that you always see in the book. It's a thing that looks like this, right? And so each one of these curves is a certain number of milliamps. Maybe this is one milliamp, two milliamps, three milliamps or something, right? And then uh, this is voltage in this direction and a current in this direction. So we already have everything else. We just need to have some type of way of inputting current. So that will be an additional circuit that we need to build. But let's go ahead and uh, hook this up and see if it works. All right. Uh, so here it's all uh, wired up. I have the transformer. I'm going in the, uh, the opposite way around. So I'm amp uh, boosting voltage. Uh, there's a bridge rectifier here, and I'm picking off the uh, positive side, so giving positive peaks. And then it's going into a series resistor to the part. And then on the, on the ground side of it, there's a 120 ohm resistor to ground that I'm monitoring. So one's measuring the voltage on the part, and one's measuring the current on the part. And uh, this is the part we're going to test. It's just a 1N uh, 4000 diode. And uh, let's see if uh, let's see if we get some type of uh, data. <clears throat> so I have the Rigel set up in um, XY mode, and uh, I wish if somebody knows how to do this, let me know. I would like to have a full screen XY, but Rigel makes this little XY and gives you some extra data. Um, if I end up building this thing, I'm going to use my uh, analog uh, oscilloscope that's in a different room. Uh, make a nicer display. But anyway, uh, here we go. Here is the uh, IV curve of the uh, of the diode. And um, I can uh, go over here to the um, um, function generator. So this is how I'm generating the uh, sawtooth wave right now. And uh, right now I have 8 volts peak to peak, and that's uh, giving me a certain voltage. And uh, I can I can lower this two volts. So we're going to start at eight, and then we're going to start lowering it. So uh, let's go back to the uh, to the display. So that's what eight volts looks like. And seven, six, five, four, three, two, and you can see the uh, the diode is is just starting to turn on there. And then I can go back up up the curve. So the way this is set up is that you can read uh, horizontally, you can read um, two volts, let's see here, no, ha half a volt, half a volt per division, so 0 0.51 volt, so it's turning on around 0 0.7 volts, um, and I can make that, uh, let's see, that's uh, this knob, so we can uh, Take a little, a little finer look. Now we're at. Um, sorry, my glasses aren't cooperating. Two, so 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6. So turning on around 0.6 volts, something like that. Um, and then in this direction, we're going to read in um, uh, milliamps. So we have two volts uh, per division. So uh, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve and 12 volts and 120 ohms is 100 milliamps. So we have 100 milliamps in this direction. Uh, so we have uh, milliamps per division this way and volts per division this way. Um, anyway, so uh, the functionality of the, same, the thing seems to be great. So now it's a matter of uh, adding all the bells and whistles to make this into a, an actual, uh, actual curve tracer with lots of settings and things like that.